ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for your patience and good day and welcome to Q1FI 25 Earnings Conference Call of Z Entertainment Enterprises Limited. As a reminder, all participant line will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touch tone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Mahesh Pratap Singh, Head of Investor Relation, Z Entertainment Enterprises Limited. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, Deepika. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our q and FI25 earnings discussion. Thanks for standing by. We have with us today our Managing Director and CEO, Mr. Puneet Goenka, along with Senior Management Team. We will start with the opening remarks from Mr. Goenka. Post this, we will subsequently open the floor for questions and answers. Mr. Goenka has to leave a bit early today, but the team will stay back uh, for the reminder of the call and take all the questions. Before we get started, I'd like to remind everyone that some of the statements made or discussed on today's call will be forward-looking in nature and must be viewed in conjunction with risks and uncertainties we face. The company does not undertake to update any of these forward-looking statements publicly. With that, I'll now hand the call over to Mr. Goenka for his opening remarks. Thank you, Mahesh. <clears throat> Good evening, everyone. I trust all of you are doing well. Thank you for joining us this evening to discuss the company's performance in first quarter of the new fiscal FY24-25. I will take you through the key aspects of our earnings during the quarter, and then we can proceed to the Q&A session. The maiden quarter of the new financial year commenced with an improving operating performance for the company. The results of several strategic steps implemented in the previous quarter are being witnessed gradually, and we continue to maintain a sharp focus on frugality, optimization, and quality content across business. Timely and action-oriented interventions centered around these three key tempos have enabled us to achieve a healthy growth momentum on the margin profile. Compared to the previous quarter, our margins continue to display considerable improvement sequentially, and we aim to drive this positive momentum higher as we move forward into this fiscal. Over the past few months, <coughs> me, we have put in concerted efforts to formulate a strategic and an aggressive growth trajectory for the company, and the fundraising exercise is a firm step in this direction. We have taken the necessary steps to create a robust financial foundation in line with our long-term plan of delivering higher performance and enhancing the value accretive capabilities of the company in the interest of all our shareholders. Coming back to the company's performance during the quarter, despite seeing some green shoots in the last quarter of the previous fiscal, the advertising revenue growth still remains subdued with rural reco recovery yet to pick up entirely. In addition to the softness and demand, this quarter was also sports heavy, coupled with general elections, which further took the share away from general entertainment advertising spends. These factors have impacted advertising revenue during the quarter. However, this challenging environment, our prudent cost discipline across the business helped offset the headwinds. Our conversations with large FMCG clients indicate the pickup in advertising spends in the second half of the fiscal and with the onset of the festive season. That said, we remain cautiously optimistic of the macroeconomic environment improving and growth momentum picking up as we move forward in the fiscal. We are encouraged by the schemes and initiative proposed by the finance minister in the union budget announced last week to help spur demand and boost the rural economy growth rate in mid to long term. <clears throat> On the subscription side, the outlook remains steady and we have continued to benefit from the implementation of the National Tariff Order 3.0, 
which is driving subscription revenue growth. With a conducive policy framework in place, we are hopeful of registering a gradual growth in linear subscription revenue in line with the inflation in coming few quarters as well. This coupled with the steady growth of Z5 subscription is resulting into a balanced and healthy revenue profile from the linear and digital segments. During the quarter, the TV entertainment viewership across the industry witnessed a marginal impact due to sports and elections. The magnitude of the impact on our network share was much lower than some of our peers during the quarter. Furthermore, in July, we have already regained the viewership share and are well placed in our key markets. The underlying fundamentals remain strong and we continue to invest significant time and energy to enhance our delivery of quality content to further consolidate our viewership share gains. On the digital front, I had mentioned in the previous quarter that our near-term focus is to achieve a balanced cost structure to drive profitability for the long term. The teams have put in immense efforts during the quarter to optimize and arrive at a balanced financial profile for Z5, and I'm pleased to note that we are already on the path to achieve a healthy cost structure for the business, which is evident in the significant reduction in the EBITDA lost this quarter. As we progress in this phase towards our targeted cost objective, the digital business growth rate witnessed a marginal slowdown, but we expect it to rebound in the second half of the year. Z5 remains well positioned in the digital landscape and has seen healthy quarter on quarter growth in usage and engagement metrics, underscoring its strong fundamentals. With the platform's strategic focus on good quality content, language markets, targeted investments, and in exci exciting content lineup, we expect Z5 growth momentum to sustain. In the movies and music business, we continue to drive synergy benefits across our portfolio to enhance the overall contribution to the top line. During the quarter, Z Studios released films like Maidan and Mr. and Mrs. Mahi in Hindi. We believe that both the businesses have been displaying signs of gradual growth trajectory, enabling the country to nurture a well-diversified entertainment portfolio. During the quarter, our EBITDA margin has seen an improvement of 500 basis points year on year, and this is a testimony of our effective cost management in an otherwise challenging operating background. We also witnessed an uptick in the profit after tax from continuing operations during the quarter to rupees 1,257 million. On the balance sheet, our focused efforts have enabled us to further strengthen our liquidity and financial position. During the quarter, we have generated strong key free cash flow, and our content inventory has also continued to decline, driven by optimized acquisition and movie releases. As the true potential of the media and entertainment sector gets unlocked with intensified competition and the advent of newer revenue streams, we remain guided by our strategic priorities in order to appropriately capitalize on the emerging growth opportunity. We are committed to achieve our targeted aspirations for the future, and our efforts in the subsequent three quarters will be focused towards enhancing our revenue profile with prudence and resilience at the forefront. The action-oriented steps implemented earlier have resulted in the company maintaining a firm grip on its costs, and we aim to continue posting a healthy margin improvement rate. As we move forward, we remain optimistic of recovery in the overall macroeconomic environment on the back of good monsoons and an oncoming festive quarter. On that note, I would also like to hand over the session to Mahesh to open up the Q&A round. I'm also accompanied by Mr. Mukund Galgali, who has recently assumed responsibility of the financial vertical. Thank you very much. Over to you, Mahesh. Thanks, Mr. Goenka. Before we proceed to the Q&A session, I'd like to request uh, everyone to please restrict yourself to a couple of questions. You can always join the queue back. Uh, with that, I request the moderator to take the discussion forward for Q&A. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. 
Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touch tone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Avnish Roy from Novama. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks. My first question is on the fundraise. Uh, so uh, fundraise by uh, uh, TV uh, broadcasting companies is quite rare. Uh, so wanted to understand uh, uh, deployment, uh, where do you see and what are the timelines and uh, what is the thought process behind this uh, in terms of doing it now? Uh, I would request Vikas to step in and answer that. So this fundraise was uh, undertaken mainly, you know, to ensure availability of funds which can act as a growth capital for our uh, growth uh, plans, both organic as well as in or inorganic. As we speak, you know, the team is currently working on those plans. Uh, they are uh, fine-graining those plans and very soon will be ready uh, with our deployment plan. Uh, but that's a work in progress. The idea was to ensure a pool of capital at this stage so that we are ready not only for the shifting dynamics of the sector, but also the shifting dynamics in the, the competitive dynamics which is, uh, being, uh, which is you know, uh, undergoing right now. So that was the idea why we went for this fundraise, wanted to fortify our balance sheet, and very soon we'll be ready with our deployment plans also. We are working on that as of now. We have a broad sense of it, but uh, we, uh, we put, you know, just some more work is left on that front. Understood. And uh, last question will be on uh, overall uh, uh, competitive intensity. Uh, overall competitive intensity, if you can comment. And uh, uh, given uh, consolidation is happening uh, between the two large players and currently regulatory approvals, etc., are happening. Uh, so I, uh, my question is, uh, one year down the line, when say all approvals come and most of the current uh, properties uh, go to the joint entity. How do you see uh, costing pressure? How do you see pricing pressure? Uh, that would be one. And second is because of so much cost cutting within the company, if you could comment on talent pool, how it is, uh, plus how is the morale of the team? Because uh, so many things have happened in the company in the last one year. Merger got called off, then cost cutting. Now margins are recovering, which is a good thing. Overall, if you could address the uh, HR aspects, that would be easy. Sure, Amish. Puneet here. So, uh, you're right that a lot has happened in the company in the last six to eight months. But uh, we are working over time to make sure that the morale of the organization remains upbeat. Of course, whenever there is uh, this magnitude of uh, correction that happens in the HR side, there will be some level of uh, disappointment and fear that sets in. But uh, as I stated, that we are working over time to ensure that remains uh, uh, upbeat and uh, regular communication with the entire organization is taking place. Um, I am personally, in fact, traveling to all the centers to make sure that I meet people on a regular basis to, to ensure that the organization is still behind them and we will uh, come out, emerge victorious in this uh, timeline. Secondly, on the competitive landscape, uh, my view, Avnish, uh, has always been that we have competed uh, with uh, the largest of the organizations in this market, in the media and entertainment market. And uh, by virtue of just two players coming together, while they will have a lot of synergistic benefits, which we also talked about when we were trying to do our merger, does not restrict or uh, make us um, less, uh, you know, capable of competing with them as a joint entity. So I think uh, me and my team are pretty confident that they will continue to uh, work uh, on the entire portfolio and, and deliver on the expectations that you and the shareholders have from us. So, uh, and in terms of the team, uh, while we've had some churn, 
as uh, you would have seen, a large part of the churn has actually happened in the tech center, a large part of which was due to the fact that the platform has already reached a certain stage of operation. And uh, we didn't actually, they had become a bit redundant, those people, and therefore it happened. Uh, on the television side and other, th other sides, the, uh, the, the talent, uh, uh, this thing has been pretty decent and most of the talent is still with us and therefore we are confident on delivery on the business. Anybody wants to? Nice. <clears throat> so thanks, uh, question, Abish. Yes, yes, it's done, sir. Thanks, sir. That's all from my side. Thank you. Thanks, Abish. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Abhishek Kumar from JM Financial. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, uh, thanks for taking my question. Uh, my first question is on uh, fundraise again. I was just curious uh, about the you know uh, FCCB route. Any logic or any rationale for selecting this instrument over any other instrument? Because it, uh, it exposes us to uh, foreign currency uh, variations. So any thoughts on, on, on this? Yeah, hi. See, we went for the FCCB because we wanted a flexibility of drawing in funds over relatively a longer period of time. As I said, you know, the whole idea was to fortify our balance sheet and be ready with enough, uh, enough resources at disposal. But uh, we would be very prudent in deploying, uh, or we want to be very prudent in deploying these funds. And FCCB is an instrument which was giving us this flexibility of drawing in or having multiple drawdowns in line with our deployment plan over a longer period of time. And that was the reason why we selected this over other uh, instruments. There were other instruments which were giving a flexibility, but there were uh, limitations. You know, at the best, we could have got 18 to 36 months only out there. And uh, that was the reason why we went for FCCB. Okay, that's helpful. Uh, second question is on business. Um, I mean, the worry is while we are, uh, you know, reducing costs, um, uh, is there a fine line between, you know, cutting the fat and, and cutting into muscle, uh, growth muscle of the company? Uh, you know, we have seen sequential decline in OTT revenue this time. I'm not sure if it is seasonal or it, it is because, uh, you know, we are spending less on content, etc. So how should we balance, you know, margin expansion with, with our growth aspirations? So we said it's a combination of both what you said. You know, it's a sequential reduction in revenue because of the heavy nature of the events happening uh, uh, during the quarter like sports and the general elections, which have caused this to happen. Uh, as you know that we are a very heavy general entertainment-led network, including our OTT is very general entertainment-led. And that's the reason that's happened. I can truly believe that we have not really cut into the muscle or the bone yet. We have only cut the fat. And if required, once we see that we need to fortify again by getting in talent uh, for the organization, I think we are capable enough to bring talent back uh, as and when needed, as in, we, as in when we see the macroeconomic situation improve for the company and for the various verticals. Just to add to what uh, Puneet uh, uh, mentioned, Abhishek, I think when you specifically look at digital and the sequential decline you're referring to, keep in mind that we had a bit of a uh, bump in Q4 because there was ILT20 and some of the other things, so that really aided the revenue. Uh, also, as Puneet alluded in opening remarks, even sequentially, we've seen the number of paying subscribers, the engagement, et cetera, has gone up. So it's not something we're structurally concerned about from the health of business standpoint. It's just a phase, like we alluded a couple of quarters back, we expect H1 to be soft because at this point in time, our priority is to get the unit economics and uh, cost base right. But as we go into the back end of the year, we, we're hopeful and confident that the growth will pick up even in the digital side of things. It's just a conscious choice we've made. And internal of the business in terms of both subscribers and engagement still remains very healthy. That's very helpful. Thank you and, and good luck. Thank you, Abhishek. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Jignesh Joshi 
sorry, Jignesh Joshi from Prabhudas Leeladhar Private Limited. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah. Uh, hi, sir. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, sir, in the Z5 business, we have seen uh, a considerable reduction in uh, EBITDA losses. Uh, so where exactly uh, have we seen the rationalization come through? I mean, apart from uh, the uh, manpower cost, uh, which you mentioned, uh, has some bit of uh, rationalization also happened on the content uh, technology or marketing side? And if you can comment how, how uh, scalable uh, is this? And also a related follow-up is that uh, on the back of uh, lower losses, we have also seen that uh, uh, growth has slowed down a bit. Uh, I, I obviously refer to the comment which you mentioned that back-ended, the growth will be better. But is a digital business expected to see uh, some kind of a growth reset uh, so as to ensure, ensure reduction in losses? So, Jivesh, just I'll take the second part first. As I just mentioned to... Uh, Abhishek, that this is also seasonal in nature because of the events that were happening like sports and the uh, general election, etc. Uh, that's the reason you've seen some slowdown in the... And what even Mahesh was saying earlier that Q4, we have um, uh, sporting properties and we have events like recent awards, etc. on our network, which aid the revenue growth for Q4. I would not read too much into that uh, as such. Uh, in terms of the cost uh, that you talked about on the digital business, it has largely come on the manpower side. That is also from the tech center. And uh, then marketing, uh, based on whatever the needs are on the content that we are offering, uh, and, 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 and done on that basis. We don't, we have not taken the to cut the content requirement for Z5, but we are going to optimize the content requirement for Z5. That's what we are trying to do. Uh, sure, sir. And just one uh, last question from my side. Uh, has a full rationalization on the employee cost already happened? Because if I look at our 1Q number, uh, the employee cost is down by about 13% uh, to 225 crores. Uh, so is it expected to kind of rise a bit uh, in the in the second half or, or is full rationalization already happened? So the largest part of the rationalization in terms of people has already happened. In terms of cost, I'll ask Mukul to step in and respond to that. Uh, can you repeat the question please on the cost? Uh, so my question was, uh, on, on the employee cost side, has a full rationalization already happened or are we going to see some kind of a uh, increase on the second half side, given the fact that we are expecting some back-ended recovery on the top line front? Uh, no, I, as Puneet mentioned, a large part of the restructuring has been uh, achieved, and uh, we will always focus on you know maintaining maintaining an optimal structure to suit the business requirements, and which will be an ongoing exercise. But having said that, a large part of uh, the exercise is already achieved. Sure, sir. Thank you so much. Chinesh, uh, just one last point. Uh, you also made a comment in your previous question about the sustenance of Z5 uh, reduction uh, to some extent. And uh, while Puneet covered it, just to sum it up, uh, look, when you think of Z5 trajectory from here on, there are two phases to think of. There is still uh, some bit of room which is left in the cost structure. And then the second phase starts, which is really the operating leverage growth driven phase as the revenue accelerates back. So that's the kind of two levers as we think of. And that is where we believe that there is still going to be uh, room to further drive improvement in this line item. Be prepared like we've guided you in past as well for some quarter on quarter volatility, depending on how we respond to certain uh, seasonal factors. But we believe that uh, there is still room for us to further drive improvement in Z5 when you really take a medium to long term view of cost structure. Sure, noted. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Umang Mehta from Kotak Securities. Please go ahead. Hello. Yeah, uh, thank you for the opportunity um, and congratulations on reducing Z5 losses. The question was on the core business. So if we exclude the Z5 losses, uh, it seems like the core business EBITDA has declined by 10%. Uh, 
um, while I understand uh, ad growth was uh, negative, uh, was there any other element as well uh, which led to this decline? So there are two parts there, uh, Umang, as you think this through. One, as you rightly alluded, uh, uh, linear business is quite exposed to operating leverage sensitivity around uh, ad revenue and that flows through. The second bit is a bit of mix, right? I think when you exclude digital, you're basically looking at residual business, which does, which just doesn't have linear. It also has movies, right? And movies have, uh, you know, depending on how they flow through over their life cycle, they make healthy margin, but for a period, uh, depending on how you account for them, theatrical, etc., could cause volatility. So that's really what has happened, uh, which is why the picture gets a bit uh, muddled. But it's not something which is uh, structurally different or structurally something which is deteriorated in linear. It's quite um, actually healthy and like Puneet alluded, uh, as we will come out, I mean, the July our viewership share is actually quite healthy and things are looking quite positive. Of course, the ad revenue sensitivity plays out and then there's a bit of a mixed change because of linear and movie. Understood. Uh, that's helpful. And the second one was on the FCCB. So uh, given that you have received approval from RBI, uh, uh, understanding was that uh, you would have to give some uh, drawdown schedule um, uh, to them. So broadly, could you share some details like the uh, deployment of funds, the drawdown schedule, minimum locking to exercise the call option, uh, and the end use of funds? Yeah, on that, just give us some time. You know, as we have said uh, in the earlier part of this call, the team is working and fine graining that particular uh, plan of uh, drawing the, of having the drawdown schedule finalized. So just give us some more time. We are working on it. We have a we have quite a broad sense of where the opportunities are and where, and we have kind of ear pocketed that uh, those areas, but uh, we will need just a couple of days more to finalize the deployment schedule. Understood. Uh, but just one clarification on end use, there is no restriction in terms of RBI ECB norms uh, for you to acquire any company, right? Uh, uh, just clarifying that because uh, uh, it seems like there's some regulation on ECB, but I'm not sure about FCCB. So, FCCBs are governed in the same regulatory framework uh, in a way uh, among, so it's ECB guidelines does apply uh, to that extent, yes, uh, whatever the ECB framework says, we will have to operate within the realm of that framework and regulatory guidelines. Okay, Manish, I'll uh, connect with you separately. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. Participant who wish to ask question may please press star and one at this time. The next question is from the line of Arun Prasad from Avenda Spark. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, good evening. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, my first question is uh, again, once again, uh, touching upon this competitive intensity uh, and uh, 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 so, uh, Puneet, you mentioned about uh, how you are prepared, but uh, um, so competition, especially the bigger one that uh, we are talking about, uh, can basically hurt you on three uh, avenues. One is on the advertising; they can reduce the rates or more of more of the they can they can dominate, or they can they can uh, they can play more efficiently on distribution. And third is on the uh, content and talent. Uh, out of these three, which one you are most worried about? Actually, obviously you will you will you will have confidence to tackle all this. But uh, according to you, which one you think you know it can uh, be? You know they can play bigger in any of these than you. I don't mind share. I'll take this. Punita uh, just stepped out. Okay. Um, so look, I think between the three. Uh, we of course watch and study everything, but that, that but there's nothing we would lose sleep over or be overly concerned about. Let's take them one by one, right? Ad rate. Ad rate is a function of viewership, right? At the end of the day, if you have the viewership, you will get your corresponding rate and you have your pockets of strength in terms of general entertainment, in terms of specific regional languages. So it really is a very micro conversation, channel to channel, genre to genre, language to language. And we are quite confident with the viewership share we have and the relevance we have in those markets we will get our share of uh, ad revenue. And you look back uh, in your channel checks and market channel checks, 
we've always commanded uh, revenue share ahead of our viewership share to that extent. That's really been the history, and that really comes because the construction of the viewership share is very relevant in terms of market to market, prime type, and so on. So that's on the ad share. On the distribution, again, it's basically a fair. I mean, it's a fair market for everyone. It's, uh, you know, there is uh, equal playing field, and to that extent, uh, we have trust in regulatory strength and uh, oversight that you know this will remain a fair playing field in that sense. So that again is something we're not uh, overly concerned about. And then the third question you asked about talent and content. Uh, talent Puneet addressed uh, in detail when he responded to Abhinish's question. But on content, again, it really is genre to genre. We don't really compete aggressively in, let's say, sports or uh, high budget ticket movies and so on and so forth. And if someone wants to be aggressive in that market, um, you know, it really doesn't hurt us. But when it really comes to making uh, general entertainment across Hindi, across different genres, it's something of uh, core strength. And we think within that ecosystem, given the deep relationships we have with producers, with content ecosystem, the uh, ability to having done this over 20 years at a very frugal cost structure will help, will keep us in very good stead. So yes, I think we're watchful about competition. Uh, and regardless of this outcome, we've been watchful about competition for the last 20 years as we run the business. But uh, it's not something we are overly concerned about. Of course, we will have to see as the competitive intensity unfold and respond to it if there's something which is really alarming. But that's really what our initial view is. OK, Mahesh, I think uh, from what you have said, I think uh, uh, what I can infer is that uh, distribution is where probably you will have uh, a tough fight. Uh, but but the fundraise uh, doesn't solve uh, even uh, help you in fighting uh, in that avenue. So so once again, tying back to the fundraise, uh, not very clear how uh, the, the three problems, the three avenues, how the fundraise will solve any of this. Uh, uh, issue. Uh, maybe it will create a buffer, uh, but uh, beyond that, uh, any expectation from the fundraise, how, how it will help you in addressing these issues? No, I think it's it's not necessarily true, Arun. So take an example of fundraise and take an example of the second point you made about distribution. If you take a view and and deploy some of the funds a lot more on the digital side of it. Actually, in digital, you short circuit the distribution altogether, right? Because it allows you to go to a consumer directly, unlike what the linear world did it. So it's not necessarily true that you can't really make, like I said, you can't really make it micro battle sector to sector and compete with it. OK. Hmm. Right, right. Okay. Uh, uh, secondly, on this, uh, on the Z5, you mentioned uh, the, the, the sequential reduction is seasonal, but under the until our revenue mix is uh, balanced between ad and subscription, the seasonal impact should not be seasonally. It should not impact us, uh, right? So, are we saying our our mix is much more balanced instead of subscription, maybe? Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't, I mean, when you say balance, I presume you're implying 50-50. I wouldn't say, I wouldn't give you the number, but I would only leave it with saying, look, you know, advertising is a reasonable part of the portfolio to that extent. So it, and ILT20 is a decent property. So some of those factors could cause volatility. That's one. And keep in mind that also every quarter on quarter, your mix changes, not just between AWARD and SWARD, which you alluded to. It could also change between customer mix, between B2B, B2C, and all of it. So there are multiple factors which play out. Uh, and given you're talking of much smaller base, that kind of volatility of low single digit kind of swings can come in on a sequential basis. And, and just uh, last clarification, our most of the subscriber base in the annual plan or a monthly plan? Annual plan. OK. OK. Thanks, Mahesh. Uh, all the best. Thank, Thank you. you. The next question is from the line of Karan Torani from Elara Capital. Please go ahead. Oh, hi. Thanks. Sir. Congrats for good attending the comment. Uh, my question was, there are two questions I had. One was on the regional journal performance. Is, sorry, your voice is echoing a bit. It's slightly 
Okay. Is it fine now? Yes, better. Yeah. So I had two questions. One was on the regional uh, journal performance. So of course you will see acceleration uh, in terms of ad revenue during the festive season. Uh, but do you also foresee potential market share gain uh, in the regional journal? Uh, I mean, what is the update there in terms of complement intensity, and where do you stand in the larger regional journals like Tamil, Telugu, and the smaller ones like you know Marathi, Bangla, Malayalam? Yeah. Okay. Yes, I think we've had. Uh we have had decent momentum in uh, regional markets current like we've spoken we've uh, historically we've spoken marathi we were focusing on and marathi has been consistently building up on that strength uh, as we look tamil had recovered as well and sort of solidifying uh, its position so generally in i would say the portfolio there are bright spots in uh, regional market. There will always be a market which will go through a cycle, but beyond that, I think we're well positioned in most of those regional markets to take advantage of uh, festive spending coming along. And uh, I think, like I like Puneet alluded, our July share already seems very encouraging and September, October, as you head into festive season, we feel quite good about it across the portfolio. And that applies to regional markets as well. Uh, and we continue to focus on each market uh, in a very targeted manner in terms of making content changes or distribution adjustments and so on and so forth. So feel good about uh, where the setup is heading into festive season across the regional portfolio as well. Right. And in terms of uh, ad revenue, not asking for any kind of guidance, but uh, you know, uh, if you look at the other traditional mediums like print, uh, that put together, uh, they have seen a big flip, you know, because of election, and uh, somewhere, you know, they are, uh, you know, way ahead uh, as compared to pre-COVID in terms of absolute number. Uh, TV is one segment, you know, which is kind of uh, seen a struggling phase, and specifically, you know, broadcasters in the GEC side. So, <clears throat> say on the near term, say on the medium term basis, uh, what is the kind of ad revenue that would expect on a steady state for the linear TV uh, business? Of course, this would be separate, but for the linear TV side. Uh, is it uh, mid single digit, high single digit? What is the kind of ad revenue that one should pencil in? Current, uh, it's difficult to put a number, but I'd, like we've said before, uh, we think, um, we strongly believe that there's still a reasonable headroom for the growth uh, on the linear side of portfolios, uh, given that there is still, uh, uh, you know, sort of a fair bit of brand building which is happening from large FNCG companies and Today, the kind of reach TV provides uh, with a 750 million plus 800 million kind of reach versus, let's say, any digital avenue makes TV very relevant in the brand building and overall spending. So to that extent, when you layer that kind of uh, reach advantage and layer the relative penetration and cost of ownership in the country, we think there is uh, headroom for the TV revenues to grow at a healthy pace. Given where we are coming from, I'd help not really put a number to it in terms of mid single digit, high single digit, et cetera, but we think uh, wherever the industry growth is, given the kind of work we've done on uh, our uh, sort of viewership share, uh, we would uh, sort of continue to grow ahead of the market uh, in foreseeable future. Thank you, that's my time. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Kunal Bora from BNP Paribas. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks. Uh, uh, Mahesh, can you talk about the distribution industry landscape and how it is changing? How many cable and DTH subscribers do we have at an industry level now? How many have shifted to free dish? And uh, how is your linear being subscriber base trending? Uh, so I mean, the numbers would vary a little bit. Uh, we'll give you a high-level sense of it. I'm requesting Vikas yeah. to come in and uh, sort of address that. And so they are around, uh, you know, you talked about, uh, let me start with the free dish. So they are around, uh, given any report, they are close to 45 million uh, free dish subscribers today. Uh, that's the FTA uh, universe today. Over and above, there would be close to around 120 to 130 million paid subscribers. So this is the universe which we are looking at. There is still around, uh, you know, uh, pretty uh, significant chunk of uh, TV dark homes today, uh, which are yet to be converted into TV. Now, 
you know, we, we need to see whether they directly graduate, I mean, whether the graduation happened through TV and then to connected TVs or, or they uh, straight away jump to connected TVs. That's something which every broadcaster is, you know, working on today. But that, that's a general sense of how the subscribers in this country are stacked up. And how about your uh, customer base, paying customer base on the side? How many is 120, 130 million are paying right now? Yeah, our reach in almost all the major channels which we broadcast is pretty much in line with all the other major broadcasters. So uh, there, it will be fair to say that we don't have a reach problem. Uh, the you know it varies from channel to channel, but uh, thematically or at a over on a overarching, if I need to make an overarching statement, uh, we pretty much you know our reach is uh, more than satisfactory for all our, all our major channels. In second is on Swedish. This number used to be about 20 million, maybe four five years back. It's now 45 million. Number seems to be increasing. How are you looking to address it? Because we've seen over the years uh, many flip flops. You are on Swedish, uh, remote channels from Swedish. But what's the strategy now to monetize uh, your content on the Swedish side? So I think uh, we've been out of this for last uh, more than couple of years now, uh, Kunal, and I think. Uh, We've been consistent in what we said. Look, our focus at this point in time to uh, strengthen and grow pay TV ecosystem because, in our belief, the uh, sort of uh, payback uh, what you get is much higher on the pay TV ecosystem side of things, and it's something which largely major broadcasters have sort of also uh, been, uh, you know, sort of followed the similar strategy in the last two two and a half years now. Even on the free dish, you look at last few uh, quarters, that number has sort of stagnated uh, in that uh, sort of range. We we continue to monitor this on an ongoing basis. So from a strategy standpoint, uh, it's not something we have turned a blind eye on or we have uh, parked it forever. But uh, at this point in time, uh, our focus or our energies are really focused on growing the pay TV ecosystem and uh, taking uh, you know, our share out of that sort of revenue. Understood. And lastly, on the Z5, what should be the trajectory of losses from here? I mean, we've seen a uh, significant, like say, reduction in losses, uh, but uh, is there a path to profitability? How many years uh, we might take to break even and uh, how, well, like what kind of improvements can we expect on an annual basis from here? Look, uh, Kunal, we're not, we're not, we're, giving any guidance from a break-even standpoint. Uh, but like we alluded uh, four quarters back, uh, we alluded saying look, Z5 is already at its peak cost structure. And we have backed that uh, and demonstrated that quarter after quarter as we've got the losses lowered. With our vantage point where we sit, we think uh, as you look out, you know, from a longer term standpoint, and what I mean by longer term is not just quarter on quarter, but if you look out, let's say, from where we are to where we would be three, four quarters out and where we would be another three, four quarters out, you would see this number continue to sort of trend down. We would keep some flexibility. The only reason we're not providing the guidance uh, here is we want to keep some flexibility to be able to respond uh, depending on how the competitive intensity plays out, depending on how our growth versus profitability objectives align, to be able to reinvest in certain areas a little bit more aggressively and so on and so forth. But it suffices to say that with where you are, the kind of reduction you've seen in this quarter, one, is sustainable. And second, from a directional standpoint, if anything, you should work with an assumption that medium to longer term, that loss number would continue to trend down. And I'll let Mukund add uh, more slides. Kunal. Yeah, so Kunal, uh, I would just like to add to what Mahesh said that uh, Z5, has positioned itself, you know, in terms of a niche content offering. And uh, as far as content goes, it has sort of established itself as uh, providing uh, a, a kind of content which it is uh, unique. And, <clears throat> and we will continue to, while the costs will trend downwards, we will continue to invest wherever required. If uh, there is adequate monetization opportunity, uh, that will be, you know, a tactical call taken from time to time. And as you look to lower losses from here, uh, do you see a higher opportunity coming from uh, increase in revenue or is there uh, a potential to further reduce costs? 
Yeah, I mean, our focus will be, of course, to uh, look at uh, you know expanding our revenue, and uh, while we will always also keep a close watch on the cost as Understood. we go forward. That's it from my side. Thank you. Thanks, Pranay. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, due to time constraints, the next question will be the last question. The next question is from the line of Samir Deshpande from Fair Deal Investment. Please go ahead. Hello. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, Samir. Please go ahead. Yeah. Congratulations on a good set of numbers. And uh, um, despite the uh, cautious commentary in Q4, we have really did well. And uh, as uh, the good thing is, you mentioned about the operating losses of Z5, which have been contained significantly, and going forward they are also sustainable. So that is definitely a good uh, thing going forward in improving our operating margins as per our targets. Um, I had one question regarding the uh, in the notes on accounts. It is note number eight, where uh, uh, there was an investigation committee which was appointed. Independent Investigation Committee under the uh, chairmanship of former judge of Allahabad High Court. So, have they completed the investigation? Uh, Mr. Deshpande, the committee is in process of, uh, you know, completing their work. I mean, they have appointed uh, experts to review and uh, that work is on and uh, as soon as it is completed and uh, placed before the board, it will be, um, you know, uh, made available uh, it will be announced. Okay, so, but uh, I think uh, it is about now, uh, about uh, six, seven months, uh, I think it was in February, you know, we had, so it is almost nearing completion now. Uh, it's, an, it's, a, it's at an advanced stage, uh, Mr. Deshpande. At the moment, we can uh, confirm that. Okay. And uh, regarding the fundraise, uh, the, as you mentioned that, the things are yet to be terms, etc., not yet disclosed. But uh, and it will be done in uh, tranches as and when you feel there are opportunities. So we are not going to raise the money upfront, maybe thousand crores or etc., because we already have some thirteen hundred or crores of cash. So any fundraise at this point is not necessary unless there is any inorganic opportunity or any big outflow. Is that correct? So. I think, um, Mr. Deshpan, they like, yeah, I mean, uh, without getting the specifics, it's fair to presume that, yes, uh, like you said, we would uh, not really be getting the money up front uh, at this point without very clear line of sight. Uh, and that was one of the considerations which went into how, what's the best way to structure the fundraise and so on. So, yes, it will be in trenches, like you said. And the last question is, uh, this uh, subscription rates, mm -hmm. under I think this MQ3, we were not allowed to raise and the bouquet, etc. Uh, so there is some uh, something in the pipeline which uh, is uh, expected to allow us to raise our subscription to levels we want. Is there any such proposal before TRI? So now the like we alluded before, now the policy framework has been quite conducive in terms of how we think of pricing. Of course, heading into election, uh, we had sort of held up uh, some of the price increases, which we are now starting to implement back and so forth. So that's really where, uh, you know, what Puneet mentioned in his opening remarks, that we think linear subscription would continue to sort of grow at a inflation-linked kind of pace as we go forward. That really is a function of, uh, you know, us taking, uh, you know, periodic sort of uh, price increases to offset our cost uh, from an inflation standpoint. Yes, that, that, that will be a much needed respite because the pricing has been controlled for a long, uh, substantially longer period. So that should definitely help us also increasing our margins. Sure, yes. And as we make those considerations, we'll also balance both pricing and churn objectives because it's, uh, you know, you'll have to look at effectively. So that's the balancing act we play as we make those choices, Mr. Deshpande. Yeah. Thank you and all the best. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, I now hand the conference over to Mr. Mahesh Pratap Singh, Head of Investor Relations, for closing comments. 
Thank you, everyone, for your interest, and thanks for joining us today. Uh, should you have any further queries or if your question was unanswered, please feel free to reach out to us. Uh, we'll be happy to engage. Uh, thank you again, and uh, look forward to speaking to you again soon next quarter. On behalf of Z Entertainment Enterprises Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.